is um, I know you don't like giving up ownership, but what what's the number? What is the number at which you would uh, consider a a sell or a uh, a sale? Excuse me of of the money motivation. I mean, Damon John's hopping on this call right now and said, "Hey, I like everything it is," and and he's willing to give you a number. You know, what, 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 how do you think about that when it comes to selling a business or do you just plan to own the business forever? So I, one way or another, I, I would never, well, I shouldn't say never, not, not, not never. Um, I wouldn't sell completely out, meaning I would still want to uh, retain some shares, uh, still want to retain some level of ownership, most likely do some type of transition over time uh, if, if, if there was a majority ownership type scenario. So right now that would be the goal. However, uh, I absolutely believe that when you start a business, you need to build it with the intent to sell it. Um, so, yeah, for me that absolutely is, is part of what I have envisioned so that there is the option then I can make the decision that, you know, at that particular time. Um, right now, the the target is fifteen million. So I would not consider selling this business until it hits at least fifteen million uh, as an equity valuation. That is the line by which I would start to consider whether or not this would be something that I would uh, begin to take on or consider, let's say, a majority ownership or some other some other piece. Now things change over time. You never know what could happen. But if you would ask me that question directly then yes. I mean, that is, that is about the line that I would begin to consider it. Uh, but as I stated, uh, I would still want to retain some ownership, but I also believe that, you know, you build businesses with the intent to sell them. So uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility from a, you know an equity transition perspective for that to be something that's pursued. Do I have time for a quick excellent, follow-up excellent. question? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, uh, two follow up questions or one question, two parts. What multiple are you using for fifteen million? <laughs> so that's okay, the, got that's him. Look at him. Real talk. Yeah, that's the equity valuation barring the multiple. I haven't even identified what the multiple would ah, be gets okay. to the volume okay. else for that. That is the minimum equity valuation that I would consider it. Okay, so let's pretend it's let's pretend it's a five x multiple. So that means you got a, a three million. Three, let's, do, let's, let's pretend we're doing sales, ten million. So you're doing three million. How much is too much interest in the essence of debt and taking on debt? How much would be too much interest to take on one times your annual vol your annual sales in debt? So at what at what interest rate would you say I wouldn't do it? You mean uh, 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 to take on debt financing? You mean? So if you had, if if you had, if if a lender walked up to you today and said, "Hey, I will write a check for one times your sales," what's the highest interest rate that you're not willing to go over to take that deal? Wait, I'm not. I'm, I'm missing something in your question. You mean this person writing me a one million dollar check as a loan? As you mean as a debt financing loan? As a debt debt. Debt financing loan, no ownership. If you have a million in sales a day, he said, I'll write you a check for a million. Got it. At what interest rate it. would you say, I'm not doing that deal? I would want that to be in the 4 to 6% range. If it's over 6%, I'm probably out. Got it. Got it. I like it. It kind of goes back to the multiple a little bit. So, that no, that, that's a good answer. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Yep. No, yeah, no doubt. It. And let me, if I can ask a quick question before we go to the fourth quarter, if you will, and that's just me listening and learning and, you know, loving what I'm hearing. Um, give me a, a, a least a small insight into the how why 6% is the number. Again, not even understanding all of this. I'm just being very sincere with you all. But I, I've seen, watched this happen in the movies, if you will, but I don't know, you know, again, I'm not been in this, in this position. But what, what, why does that number make you say that's too much? Um, as you said, oh, I'm out. As you said, yeah. So, so for, I mean, uh, it's driven by a couple of things. One, one is just driven by. I mean, you got to look at the competitive rates that currently exist or historically have existed. Right now, obviously, with everything going on, they've been lowered for for a certain easing of certain things. But prior, just prior to this, if you looked at a standard 
working capital loan that is in a competitive space, it normally was a, was around the prime rate, which is the prime rate that's already established across the board, plus about maybe three points. And prime was somewhere in the three to four percent range, maybe a little more, but in that three to four percent range. Um, and then if you add three to it, that's around six percent. So my first thing is, competitively speaking, I would not go over that because in the broader marketplace, there's there's not a market for that. And so why would I go mm-hmm. over that? You know, go over that amount. Right. So part of it is Makes using sense. that. The second the second piece of it is just my own experience with brokering deals like this and what has traditionally happened in brokering a deal like that where somebody's getting some type of financing to purchase something, I'm brokering the deal. What have generally been the rates that have either broke the deal or made the deal? And that four to six percent range has generally been consistent. 